to Luke chapter number 14. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Did you see that? The Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, Jesus divested himself of his power and glory and majesty and authority and dominion in heaven. He left everything in heaven. He was stripped of all authority in heaven and he came here as a man. Brother, sister, I'd like you to take notice of this. Every time you study, you fellowship with the word of God from Matthew through Mark and Luke and St. John's Gospel. We call them Gospel. I want you to understand that everything you see Jesus do there, he did it as a man. He did it as the son of man. The Bible says of Elijah, he said, Elijah was, was you know, of a like passion like us. Subject to the same passions like us. But he prayed. And rain did not fall for three and a half years. So, everything you see Jesus do or did, he did as an ordinary man. He did under the unction of the Holy Ghost. He had to be anointed to do those things. Just as you have, you have to be anointed to do, you know, things today. I mean, if he came here as God, who is going to anoint God? Will God ask that, okay, God anoint me. God, I am God, please anoint me. Who is going to anoint God? So, all the things he did while he was here on earth were done by the power of the Holy Spirit. Done as a man, son of man. Meaning that one, he's the pattern son. He's the model son. The one we should follow. The one we should copy. If you are looking for someone to copy, brother, sister, copy Jesus. Just copy him. And the Bible says, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Returned? That means there was a journey. There was a journey. It was a journey that was organized. A deliberate planning. A conscious effort to stand up and get some things done. There was a journey. How can you return from where you didn't go to? How can you return if there's no journey? And listen, he returned how? I mean, the Bible is so clear. How did he return? In the power of the Spirit. Not in the power of the flesh. Not in the power of man. In the power of the Spirit. In other words, Jesus, when he was born, looked at his country, the whole country, and saw that, mm -hmm, I'm going to be different. I can't be like the people around. 
My life must count for something. There's a higher call. One man of God said, higher, higher, higher life. There's a higher life. There's a higher purpose. You know, some people think that, okay, when you are born, your parents sent you to school. So you did the first school, first school living certificate. Then you did the uh, college. Then you went to the university. Then you did, you graduated. Then you did your national youth service. Then you came out. Then you got married. Then you had children. Then you got a job after several years of NFE. I hear they say it's no future ambition. But anybody here, you have an ambition. There's future for you, amen? amen. Your future is right in the Word of God. Not from these fellows who don't even know what they are doing. So you get married now. So you have a job. So the usual uh, nine to five routine begins. That means from 4 a.m. you do gri 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 gri. You take your bath, jump up, jump down. You look for a sweater, you look for an umbrella. You look for a phone. You rush out. Stop an Okada, stop a car. Bi, bi, bi. Uru, uru, uru. Lucky. You go. In the night time, you stand. Bagara, bagara. One thousand. So, you might want to one chance. Now, you do this routine. You keep doing it until you are old. Or you probably begin to use uh, this thing to great color not to eat. Your teeth are falling off. What a life. Routine. The routine life. You know, in my notes here, I said, ha <laughs> glory to God. Hey! I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Can you stand up and sing that? Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Thank you. Thank you. You know why you sang that song? You have a future. Your life is not a routine life. Your life is not a regulated life. Well, if you say regulated, well, in this case, regulated by the Word of God and the Holy Ghost. Your life has a meaning. You are not just on a journey going nowhere. There's a plan. God has a plan for your life. That plan was waiting for you to be born. You were born into that plan and you're walking that plan. If you don't know that plan and you're a Christian, so sorry. There's so many who go to church. Religion. Religion. My father in law say, we should jump up ten times. My father in law say, when we're coming to church today, we should bring broom. My father in law say, the Gio say, when we are coming to bring Cain, we are going to be killing some people today. We came the devil. Bring bad love. They say we should contribute what? Religion. But Christianity is a life. The life that Jesus lived. He brought that life from heaven. He lived it here successfully. And he left us that life too. For, for us to live. Nothing wrong with what the Geo said or what the, your father-in-law said. But I hope it's not going to be telling you to bring cake and bad luck and, and oil. That's not bad. That's not. That's not, not did, did you ever see Jesus carry bad luck to church? So that's not part of me. That's not part of what I'm talking about. Whether you 
you know it or not, your life has been planned. There's a plan. There's a plan. He loved you so much that before you were born, he had a plan. Your life counts for so much. And Jesus returned. I said to you, I said there was a journey. So he consciously started out on that journey. He wanted to be different. You must be different. You must be a voice and not an echo. You can't be parroting some other people's. Who are you? Who did God plan your life to be? What did he plan your life to be? Have you found out? You must find out. And the person who will help you find out is the Holy Ghost. A lot of Christians know him as power. But I don't want to relate with him as power. Because if you relate with the Holy Ghost as power only, then you are going to, be, you are going to have to have the deal with the temptation of using that power. I don't want to use God. Then do I want you to use Him. Isn't it better if He uses you? Hallelujah. I like that. I like that better. That God uses me. Not that I use Him. You know, there are some folks fasting, 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 two million years. What are they, what are they looking for? Power. I'm not looking for power. I want friendship. The Bible says, an Abraham, the friend of God, just, he knew God on the basis of friendship and just on that basis alone, God willed the whole world to him. The whole world belongs to Abraham, not the devil. And you are the seed of Abraham. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. He left Galilee as an ordinary man. He came back born in. I like it. We want the Spirit of God said to uh, true prophet, uh, prophet the other day. They say, Who's? Let fire ooze out of you. He left Galilee as an ordinary man. He came back to something else. That's what will be said of you this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise but God. let's even look at it. How did the journey begin for the, uh, Jesus? Listen. Jesus had a job to do. There was a plan about his life. The Messiah of humanity. The Savior of the whole world. The only one who could take away the sin of mankind. Both now before and in the future there was a plan about his life but that plan was not that the kind of plan he was going to handle anyhow that plan was not the kind of plan he could achieve by the arm of flesh as an ordinary man he knew he needed extra power to do it and many of you are like that wonderful future glorious destiny and all you have been doing is trying to power with, with your wisdom. You know, I hate people who, you know, human wisdom. I don't like to see them around me. It disgusts me. It's not because I'm a man of God. I mean, come to think of it. The economy of the nation of Nigeria, how many professors have managed it? Those who studied economics from the Harvard School of Business, this school, that school, in UK or US, where, where has it gotten us? Where? Do we lack professors? Do we lack economists in this country? Sometimes take a trip to the university campuses, you see professors who are hopeless. Am I lying? Terribly hopeless. You wonder. Why is it like that? Is learning? Why? I'm not discounting education. That's not what I'm saying. But relying on okay. I think the Iraq will call it a bomb. 
That's why, why some people are where they are. You are too smart. The Bible says God himself will catch the crafty. This Maradona you are doing around, you dribble like this. The Bible says God will catch the crafty. Not you. In Jesus' name. Amen. That's not my children are crafty. The word of God tells you that Jesus is the power of God. He also tells you that Jesus is the wisdom of God. What's wisdom? He's talking about the word of God. I like that kind of wisdom. So, let's come back now before we get carried away. How did Jesus begin the journey? Luke chapter number 4 verse 14 says, And he returned to the power of the Spirit. He left the location. He was on the journey to, for something. And when he collected it, it was clear to him, to the devil, and to everybody. And he returned back to the location. You know, there are some people who say they are checking out. They want to go to Canada. No problem. If God has sent you to Canada, go. If God has sent you to America, go. But a lot of times people come to me, uh, Prophet, please pray for us. It bothers me. Do you even know God's plan for your life? Sometimes we, we, we you know, we humor them. Okay, Father, in Jesus' name, which I put here, my Lord. I'm a man on a mission. Somebody say, this man has been in ministry for so many years, and yet, shut up, you are a fool. Are you, do you know what God has asked me to do? Are you the one to tell me what to do? Is there a wicked that God doesn't talk to me? That he doesn't praise me? Or praise the church? Did you set a schedule? I can take one, two, three Christians from here now and put outside. Quality Christians. They receive the meat of the word of God from their man of God. Not kerosene Christians. With kerosene anointing. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. And by, by the time you ask them two questions, they are confused. The Holy Spirit told me to wake up at this age of your life. Now wake up, now they tell you. Wake up. The Holy Spirit wake me up. And as I was trying to make bones in the kitchen, oh yeah, but my, at this age of your life, oh, oh my shoe. That kind of Holy Spirit, I don't want to do that one. My life is for a higher purpose. Don't you understand? Hallelujah. Luke chapter number 4 verse 1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. This is the path most Christians don't like. Jesus had to seek to be anointed with the Holy Ghost. And when he returned from where he, returned, he received the Holy Ghost, God took him on another assignment. Wilderness. Say wilderness. wilderness. The wilderness is a hard place. Why would God send his own son to a hard place? A lot of you, you complain. When you see challenges, you complain. You thought that when you got born again, it should be ice cream. No. Or cold stone. You are joking. He sent his own son, the model son, into the wilderness. To be trained in the world. To be trained in the things of the spirit. To be trained in fasting. That's how to put this body, this your flesh, under control. There are some people who take them cold stone now. Only them can take 10 buckets of ice cream and they won't shake body. We have to train that flesh, otherwise it will kill you. If you don't train that flesh, that glorious destiny ahead of you, you may not be able to reach there. And it won't be God's fault. Then will it be the devil's fault. You are the one that is not handling the aspect of the training that is personal.
They say three days dry fasting. You are eating. You are not doing me. Continue eating. A time will come when there's nothing to eat. You want to beg? Hallelujah. So he began a journey. By the way, do you understand that the Holy Ghost is also the one known as the power of God? The power of God. I've told you this church before. I said, Holy Ghost is not his name. But when you call him that, you understand. Because holy is his character. It's his nature. When you say, well, let me calm down. The Holy Ghost is not really his name. But it's okay when you call him Holy Ghost, he'll respond. You need to know at this stage that when you say power, when you say Holy Ghost, when you say anointing, all the spirit, they are referring to the same thing, the power of God. They are referring to the third person of the Trinity. There's God the Father, who is Papa God. There's God the Son, who is the Word of God. The maker of all things. Then there's God the Holy Ghost, the enforcer, the doer. The power behind the truth. So, when you come across, across times in the Bible that talks about the anointing, the spirit and power, is referring to one person, the Holy Ghost. Praise God. By the way, I think you need to stand up very quickly and take the rema. Take the rema. Lift up your hands, stretch it to me. I declare to you, by the Spirit of the Living God, I declare the month of May 2021. You ready? As the month of power. Amen. The month of power. Amen. The month of power. Amen. Not the month of weakness. Therefore, everything associated with weakness in your life ends today. Amen. The month of power. Amen. The month of power is also the month of establishment. Amen. I see God establishing you. Amen. In all that you set your hand to do. Amen. The month of power is the month of influence. Amen. The Bible says, and his fame, his fame. The fame of Jesus spread throughout all the region because they receive power. From today, the world will celebrate you. Amen. I said the world will take notice of you. Amen. You will not die a villager. Amen. You will not die a local champion. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Beginning from your life, your generation shall be known as global achievers. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You need to know that what has kept God in force in the world today is power. Amen. Satan attempted to, I mean, he organized a coup to dethrone God and take dominion over the world. But God has remained God. The God of heaven and earth. Because of power. And because of that, that power that is coming into your life today will find expression in your family. Amen. Will find expression in your ministry. Amen. Will find expression on your job. Amen. Will find expression in your finances. Amen. That power will find expression in your health. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You shall be known through power. Amen. Amen. You shall be identified through power. Amen. The power of God in your life will announce you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to the Son of God. Amen. Sit down for a moment. So, God has 
brought you into power. The Bible says in Acts chapter number 10, verse 38, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing 